Michael Pollitt, your subject is markets for water. Explain a little bit more. Well, I think the um, traditional model for uh, the water industry has been a vertically integrated um, water and sewerage company in the UK, where you've got a, a natural monopoly in a particular area, and each area tends to be self-sufficient in water. Um, but of course, what that means is that um, some places pay much less for water than others, places that have, have got lots of uh, rainwater and lots of uh, reservoir capacity um, are paying less than water scarce areas, say, in the south. In the southwest, for instance, farmers are being incentivised to, to save water, aren't they? Yes. Um, so I think the, uh, the, the issue is where you get your extra water from. So as water demand perhaps expands in the future or water supplies contract um, due to climate change in particular areas in the UK, um, that will mean that the, the differences in the cost of producing one more metre cubed of water in particular regions is going to um, become larger and more divergent across the country and the scope for trading water um, to mutual benefit of both the exporting area and the importing area will increase. How is that going to work? Well, of course, this is an interesting question which the water regulator has been thinking about. Um, one model is a model based on the electricity industry where you might um, break up the water industry, create a national transmission system for bulk water and uh, essentially create a market for um, um, w for bulk water which is then traded via this uh, national transmission system. Physically how would it work? Would it, be, would it be great tankers sailing the ocean waves and all that sort of thing or undersea pipes? Um, well it would be mostly making use of the existing um, uh, water infrastructure though in particular places you might need to build uh, linking pipelines. You might need to increase the capacity for two-way flow of water so you can bring it both ways um, and that you know requires um, upgrades to pumping facilities um, but mostly it would involve um, simply making a more active use of the existing uh, water infrastructure. I struggle with the perception of somewhere like Ethiopia or not even as far as that say southern Spain which is very arid. Well I think the, there's of course there's a myth around um, which is that you know, in developing countries, they're sort of less exposed to markets for basic commodities than, than we are in, um, in the UK. Of course, the truth is that um, in many developing countries, pe people pay very high prices for water per litre of water because, of course, they often um, have to travel to pick up, physically pick up the water that involves a lot of time cost. So although the water may be very cheap where, where they get it, um, actually the cost, um, the, 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 the sort of whole, uh, co whole cycle cost is very, very high. And of course many people in developing countries also rely on very expensive uh, tanker or bottle water um, and don't have piped water into their individual uh, homes like we do in, in, in Western countries. One of the discussion points at the symposium has been the pricing of water, working out a price for it. That would not be easy to do, would it? No, it wouldn't. It, it, well, the, the, the thing that is easy to do is to work out the, the cost of water in particular areas. So working out a cost of one more uh, metre cubed of water in Scotland versus one more metre cubed of, uh, of water in the south of England, that would be quite easy. The problem is how do you create a competitive market to establish uh, the trading, the price at which water would be traded. Um, there probably isn't quite, there, there aren't enough buyers and sellers of the water to make sure you get a competitive price. So there would ha have to be some um, regulatory control of what price actually emerged as a result of the cost differences between, um, say, Scotland and the south of England. Is that far away? Um, I think it's not far away. Um, I, 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 if there was actually a benefit to doing it. I mean, the truth is in the UK that there are benefits to water trading, but actually at the moment they're quite small. And of course, introducing a trading system, you know, having people who actually uh, buy and sell water, that in itself is expensive. And one would only want to do that if the benefits clearly exceeded the cost. 
Michael Pollitt, thank you very much. Thank you.